Alright, this is number 6 from 2009 Form B of the BC Calculus exam, um, and it is a series question, and uh, people don't like those. First thing, we need interval of convergence. I'm going to do this in a way that's going to make some of you scream, if you know what you're doing, um, because you'll be so annoyed with what I'm doing. Uh, interval of convergence, typically you need the ratio test for that, um, and then you need to test the endpoint, so that's what I'm going to do here. Um, so I'm going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the n plus first term over the nth term. Uh, and then I can cancel that down. So that's the limit as n approaches infinity of just the absolute value of x plus 1. There's no n anymore, so I can actually drop the limit. So that limit actually is just the absolute value of x plus 1. I know by the ratio test this will converge when um, that limit is less than 1, which gives me this inequality, um, which I can solve. And now I need to test my endpoints. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let x equal negative 2. I'm going to go to the original series, substitute in negative 2, and it simplifies down to this. And that's obviously divergent. Uh, it just bounces back and forth between negative 1 and 1. And then when x is 0, I substitute it in, I just get 1 to the n, which diverges. The limit is not 0. Um, so I combine this information to say that the interval of convergence is negative 2 to 0. Um, but if you know what you're doing, you'll notice... Uh, this series that we're given is actually just a geometric series. And knowing that, I know that it converges when the absolute value of r is less than 1. I know that r is the quantity x plus 1, so the absolute value of x plus 1 needs to be less than 1. And therefore, it converges between negative 2 and 0. Knowing that it's geometric means I don't need to test the endpoints, because do, geometric doesn't converge at the endpoints. Um, the next part, I need a... Uh, to find the sum, actually, of that series. Uh, this would have given you a hint, actually, about how to go back and do no, uh, part A if you weren't sure to begin with. But you need to know that the sum of a geometric series is the first term over 1 minus the common ratio. I always think of it that way in case the lower um, index isn't 0. Um, so the sum is 1 over 1 minus the quantity x plus 1, which we can simplify to negative 1 over x. And that's the sum. That's all you have to do in that part. Um, we're going to use it in the next part, though. So for part C, we have g of x defined as an accumulation function. Um, so it's the uh, integral from negative 1 to x of f of t dt. I'm going to rewrite this so that I have f of t. So replacing every x I see with a t gives me this. So this is the original series. But if you remember, in the previous part, we actually evaluated that and found that it was equal to negative 1 over t on the interval of convergence. Um, but we're within the interval for this. Um, so g of x is actually this integral which I can do. I know that now the absolute value here, the negative natural log of the absolute value of t, those absolute value signs are really important because we've got a lot of negative signs flying around. Um, so that's negative natural log of uh, the absolute value of x minus 0 because the natural log of 1 is 0, so the absolute value sign uh, helped us out there. So that's what we simplify down to. And then we're asked to find g of negative 1 half um, which is negative natural log of the absolute value of negative one-half, which is negative natural log of one-half, or if you're really into logs, just the natural log of two. And then finally, uh, we get a new function defined, and we have to write a series for it, and we have to evaluate it. And uh, if you've watched any of the other videos, you know that I'm of the opinion that the shifted centers just kind of take care of themselves. Um, so I need to shift my center to zero, but the composition that I'm going to do does that anyway. So h of x is f of x squared minus 1. So literally, I'm going to go back to the series I was given for f of x and replace every x that I see with the quantity x squared minus 1. Um, so I end up with this, and then here I'm replacing it, and then finally in the nth term I'm replacing it, and then it goes on forever. I can simplify this quite a bit, um, and you can see that I'm just getting even powers now. Um, still geometric, though, um, with a common ratio of x squared in this case. Um, so now I need to find h of 1 half. So h of 1 half, uh, as I mentioned, this is a geometric series, so that's going to be the first term over 1 minus the common ratio. Um, and I can simplify that to 4 thirds. Okay, now that was done. But there's another way to do it. So I'm going to use f this time. 
and plug in. So h of 1 half should be f of 1 fourth minus 1 um, because f h of x is f of x squared minus 1. Um, and now I can uh, simplify that and just plug this into the function that I found in the previous, and uh, I think that was part b. Um, so I get four thirds. Either way, you're going to get four thirds. Um, that's another series problem for you, uh, and uh, nothing too difficult. A lot of compositions, um, and just continually working with the function. And I hope you found this useful, and good luck.